Hi, welcome to a brand new session of learning. I have two very interesting images for you to look at here. Take a look. Don't these two creatures look similar? Kind of. Yeah, they do, right? But they also don't, right? I mean, one is a grasshopper, the other is a cricket. Good. And the poem that we are going to discuss is on the grasshopper and the cricket. Okay? But in a symbolic way. You see, the grasshopper is such a, such a bright creature. It's got such bright colors. And it represents the summer. And the cricket? No, it doesn't play cricket. It usually makes a strange whirring sound in the winters. And so they kind of, you know, represent the winter season. And before... I disclose anything further. Let's learn about the poet himself. Now, the poet is a very famous classical poet, okay? And he used his imagination to the optimum, really, to write this poem, namely, On the Grasshopper and the Cricket. John Keats was born on the 31st of October, 1795. Wow, that is so old. On the northern outskirts of London. He was one of the main figures of the second generation of romantic poets. During his lifetime, his poems were not really well received by the critics. But as his reputation grew, it was mostly after his death. And eventually, by the end of the 19th century, that is still in the 1800s, he had become one of the most loved and famous poets of England. Now, he had a significant influence on many poets and writers. Today, his poems and letters are some of the most popular as well as analyzed poems in the English language and literature. Let me give you some instances which you might have heard of in the younger standards. I stood tiptoe upon a little hill is one. Sleep and poetry is another. And the famous sonnet, on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Now, the poem On the Grasshopper and the Cricket is one of his nature poems. So, you surely remember the poem The Ant and the Cricket, right? Yeah, that poem told us of the story of a cricket and an ant, but this poem is a nature poem, and it's on the grasshopper and the cricket. In it, the grasshopper and the cricket do not appear as characters, you know, in a story. They act as symbols that represent the summer and the winter. Okay? Let us read the poem now and find out or see how the poetry of Earth keeps changing through the summer and the winter in a never-ending, ongoing song. Alright? So, let us begin by reciting the poem once. On the Grasshopper and the Cricket by John Keats The poetry of earth is never dead When all the birds are faint with the hot sun And hide in cooling trees a voice will run From hedge to hedge about the new mown mead That is the grasshoppers, he takes the lead In summer luxury he has never done With his delights for when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The poetry of earth is seizing never on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought in silence from the stone there shrills a cricket song in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness half lost the grasshoppers among some grassy hills. Now the poem on the grasshopper and the cricket is a sonnet. That means a poem consisting strictly of 14 lines. Also, it is a symbolic poem. The grasshopper symbolizes summer, where the cricket symbolizes the cold winter. The opening line of the poem suggests that the poetry of the earth is never dead. Just like every other poet, Keats too was attracted to nature.
through his poem on the grasshopper and the cricket. The poet asserts that no matter what the season is, whether it is the sweltering summer or the harsh cold winter, the music and poetry of nature is never dead. Let's read the poem again to understand a bit more. The poetry of earth is never dead. When all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees, a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown mead that is the grasshoppers. He takes the lead in summer luxury. He has never done with his delights for when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. As we can see, the first stanza of the poem is set in summer. Take a good look at the first line. Look at how he focuses on the message of the poem that the poetry of the earth is never dead. The poet has started the stanza by making this strong founded statement. He has proceeded to portray a summer scene. During a hot summer day, the birds are weak, of course, due to the hot sun. So they try to hide in the cooling trees and stop singing in order to rest. However, nature continues to persist and the grasshopper then takes the lead. The lyrical voice describes how the song of the grasshopper emerges and the grasshopper continues to hop and sing. At the same time, he even enjoys his life and is always at ease. After the grasshopper had enjoyed the nature's delight, he rests beneath the plants and weeds. Now, that's a beautiful description of nature, wasn't it? Don't you think so? Let's find out what more the poet has to say. With this, I have come to the end. But I'm going to see you with more interesting poems in the upcoming sessions. Until then, take care of yourself and each other. Goodbye. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.